All right, YouTube. Um, today I'm bringing you a tutorial on HDRI um, lighting, and basically, this is a basic lighting tutorial for HDRI images. And HDRI images are high dynamic range images. In other words, they are uh, image of a whole spherical environment around you put on a 2D flat image. Um, let me bring you a quick example. As you can see right here, if you were to wrap this around in a circle or in a sphere, it would literally look like a environment around you. You can see corners here that would eventually wrap around and look literally like a, there's a box around you. And uh, the point of these images are well, they're to help you with lighting in your scenes. Um, basically like this. If you have a scene in, uh, let's say, let's go with this bottom last one. Uh, if you have, oh, it won't show up. But if you have a scene where you have a picture as your background and the picture has a sun, you could literally use that sun in that background picture as the lighting to your whole scene. That way you don't have any let's see any objects that you added to the scene. You don't have their you don't have their lighting or reflections not matching whatever is in the background. Well any background objects that are in that scene also. And um you can see right here and as you can see right here there you have the background reflecting onto the teapot and the HDR uh, image that's in the background is lighting the the plane in the background and the teapot <clears throat> alright so now let's get started what we're going to want to do is well, let me just reset my 3ds max we want to start by making a plane just drag it right there we want to change its settings to length to 2 and its width to 1 or vice versa same thing and me I like to disable the grid that's on the perspective view by pushing G and changing the realistic and adding in edge face so that you can see the middle thing alright We'll just hit G one more time. There we go. Grid is gone. So now we see this. And we want to right click convert to edible poly. And we're going to click select edges. And we're going to select this top edge on the top viewport. And use the move tool and drag it down close to that uh, middle edge. And for some of you, you might not be able to see these um, arrows. So this happened to me when I first started doing this tutorial and I found out how to fix it. You want to go to customize preferences and if you go to gizmos tab you will see that your transform gizmos is not checked on which means that you just see this over here. So you want to go turn them on so that way you can see your actual move tool now. So now, now that's on. So yeah, you want to move it to the middle and you want to go to the front viewport and drag it up kind of like a wall. And then you want to select the middle edge again and go to the chance chamfer settings and we're just going to drag this up to about there and we're going to change the segments to about 25. Let's go with that. And if we turn off the edges, you just see that it gives it a nice round look. Okay, so now we want to go to our um, enlarge tool or transform tool and we want to select the um, plane and um, we want to turn off the edge tool and we want to just enlarge the whole thing like that. So now we want to go to the back to the create tool and uh, for tutorial purposes. Uh, we're just gonna. I'm just gonna use a sphere and a teapot to show you the effects, and that should be good right there. And if we go here to the front viewport, we want to drag the teapot. I mean the sphere. Uh, let's select the sphere. 
we want to drag it to the bottom is right on the plane like that so now we're going to go to the uh, Mac, the perspective viewport and we're going to maximize it and we're just going to just get this look the way we want it to show up zoom in like that and we're going to select the back plane again and enlarge it again just so that we have a nice background on it and if you can see the sphere right here you can kind of see segments or little um, jagged edges but we'll just fix that by going to the modify and changing its segments to 64 give it a really smooth and same with the teapot you can see it's really jaggedy bad quality so we're going to change its segments to 32 and there it's a little bit smoother okay so now once we've set up our scene we want to hit M on our keyboard to bring out the materials hit M and um, we're for this one we'll just use three materials we're gonna keep this first one um, the way it is we're just gonna go to the fuse and I'm um, just gonna change it to like a beige kind of color and we'll just set that to the back plane and for the second one we're gonna oh also make sure that you are in mental ray uh, production by doing that uh, to do that you want to go to rendering render setup where you get hit F10 on your keyboard you want to scroll down to where it says assign renderer and under production you want to click the choose renderer and it doesn't show up for me here since I already have it selected but you should see mental ray render if you don't um, there's ways uh, I can help you fix it just let me know in a comment or PM me and uh, I will send you uh, a link to how to fix it alright so now that we have um, our mental ray renderer selected we want to hit click the second um, material we want to go to standard and set it to arc and design and over here we see a rollout where it says select template uh, for tutorial purposes we're just going to select the default one so we're going to select the chrome one and on this right one we're going to also go to arc and design go to select template and for this one we'll just select um, we'll select the copper one oh sorry it's Santa Mana. I meant copper there we go and we'll put the copper on the sphere and we'll put the chrome on the teapot okay and if we were just to render this um, just normally like this we would see that uh, it does have a reflection but as you can see right here you see gray and um, if you were actually making a scene uh, you would want the scene to be reflected off this right here so by doing that that's what the point of the HDRI images are for so we want to go to rendering we want to go to environment and on none we want to we want to click it and select bitmap and we're gonna well I don't know if I mentioned this before but I found this online and I will put a description to download these HDRI Im, uh, files uh, it should all come together you know simple download unzip put on your desktop so uh, we'll just select the uh, we'll select a nice looking one. Oh, I like that one right there that right there as you can see over here in the bottom it looks like ceiling lights so we'll select that and we'll click open and by default you will have 16 bit channel selected you do not want to have that you want to have real pixels um, this is because we will not be adding any um, we ourselves will not be doing any lighting on it by selecting real pixels the environment will do the lighting for us um, you will see in a second so we select OK and it's on there done and then we want to go back to create and we want to go to our lighting and change to standard um, I didn't mention we aren't doing any lighting ourselves but we will add a skylight and what the skylight does is it's basically a light for the whole environment it's not like an omni to where you have to drag the light to where you want it to shine this literally gives a shine to the whole scene so then we want to go to its settings and under its settings 
we want to change sky color to use environment so um, by that you are using the lights that are coming out of the white from the HDR image uh, now let's render it so we can see how it looks and as you can see already the HDR image kind of shows in the background but it does get fuzzed out as you can see when you're rendering and now that you have um, shadows being created as you can see right there you have lighting be lighting um, being shined on the background plane and as you can see you have like some side um, you can kind of see the t um, studio or the whole environment being reflected off the teapot and off the sphere um, this is basically like as good as you can get it let me um, actually make this a little bigger by going to render setup changing the output size to HDTV video changing it to uh, 1280 by 720 um, this as you can tell is increasing the quality which makes um, the output preview a uh, bigger size than what the default one is as you can see right there it comes out really really nice you can see the chrome really has it's filling in perfectly the lighting is you can even see the handle being reflected onto the side of the teapot you can see the environmental floor which is coming out of the HDRI image being reflected you can see a little something that's in the HDRI image which is supposed to be a door in the environment it's getting reflected as well you can see the seemingly lights being reflected onto the um, copper sphere over here and like I said this is beautiful and it looks really realistic just by looking at this it looks real realistic this is really high quality um, materials but the beauty part about this it's high quality but as you can see it's rendered quickly and if most of y'all that work with 3ds max you know that if you want to have a high quality picture the render time is tremendous it takes so long to render I literally um, made an intro for the um, RA for us Reliant Arts and the intro like I said I did everything by hand it was so high quality but the intro I just can't render it on my computer because it takes 12 hours to render which is why I'm rendering it at school on the render farm that we have on campus um, but like I said here we have a really perfect I wish I would have figured this out before I started the intro we have really perfect uh, reflection, shine, lighting, all of that done just with a picture. Um, this is it for the tutorial. I hope you really learned something and leave a comment for any other tutorials you would like to learn.